So we've reached verse three, is that right? So yeah, we, we have to start uh, from three today, yeah. Okay, and um, before we dive in, does anyone have any, any announcements, shares, inspiration, questions, or anything at all? Related to the subject matter at hand. So, Vasini, did any, anything you want, any reflections you want to share? No, not anything right now comes to my mind. No. So, okay. All right. And we'll, we'll, we'll dive right in. Do some of our friends here, they, they, they don't know English. Some of them. Everyone here knows English so far. Okay. Okay. So we are in verse three of Sri Brahma Samhita, quintessence of reality, the beautiful. Omagyana Timirandasya, Yananjana Shalakaya, Chakshon Nitanjana Tasmai Shri, Guruve Namaha, Manchakalpa Tadubias Cha. Vipa Sindhu Vyevacha Patitanam Pavanibyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha. So I believe it was last week that we had a geography lesson. Is that right? And we went through the, the Vedic cosmology, which was very exciting. <laughs> and um, for those who are asking, that will be published soon on YouTube. Um, so now we are on to verse three and we're still i believe continuing this description of the nature of gokula or goloka depending from which side you're looking at it so we're just we we heard this description in verse two that gokul takes the form of a lotus flower we can just briefly go back to the translation of verse two. This abode takes the shape of a unique divine lotus flower possessing thousands of petals, the core of which is Krishna's own home. And so now in verse three, this is going to be elaborated upon. So we can, we can chant this together, verse, mm -hmm. verse three. Um, Okay, and if, if you wouldn't mind muting yourself. Okay. Uh, Suvasni, did you know you can, you can also mute um, if you can do that. Okay, so we are on verse three. Karni kadam mahad yantram, shat konam vajakilakam, shadanga shat padistanam, prakritya purushena cha, premananda mahananda, <laughs> what what more do we need to hear? Premananda Mahananda. <laughs> the joy of divine love and supreme joy. What what more do we need to attract our hearts? Rasa is in the next phrase. Rasena Vastitam Hiyat. Jyoti Rupe Namanuna Kama Bijena Sangatam. Translation, the center of the divine lotus is the core, Krishna's residence. It is presided over by the predominated and predominating moiety. It is mapped as a hexagonal mystic symbol. Like a diamond, the effulgent supreme entity of Krishna, the fountainhead of all divine potencies, presides as the central pivot. The great mantra of 18 syllables, which is formed of six integral parts, is manifest as a hexagonal place with six-fold divisions. And just, you know, we don't, you know, actually one thing I wanted to mention, you know, we are a little, we are cautious in hearing these things. There is one, there is actually one article. Um, Subhasini, can you make me a co-host, please? Yes. And, and welcome to those of you who have joined in the last few minutes. Suresh Prabhu has joined us. Andrea Prema Sindhu Prabhu. 
Yes, please. Uh, uh, per chi parla italiano, ho provato a condividere nella chat il testo, però copiandolo, incollandolo, vengono tutti i diacritici sfalsati. È un po' un disastro, però qualcosa leggibile c'è. Cioè. Quindi Kaneya e Krishna. Se riuscite, sì, vabbè, se riuscite a intuire quando ci sono le parole in sanscrito, poi i diacritici è tutto da inventare. Però l'italiano c'è. Quindi così. We're good. Yes. Okay. Do we have some Italian audio yeah, members? Yeah, the verse and the translation. I'm saying in the group now, do we have some Italian yeah, audio speakers? Yeah. Okay, then we can have yeah, a little maybe translation. Maybe kind of... Okay. So, you know, just, you know, one point to mention here is that we are cautious in hearing the subject matter. And, and you know, the emphasis is on hearing. We're not trying to put these things within the cage of our intellect. And we're not trying to make some, you know, mathematical calculation and all these things. There's one place where someone is referencing this verse in Brahma Samhita. This is recorded in a darshan with Shula Sridhar Maharaj. And... And this devotee is asking to Shri Maharaj, oh, he's referencing this particular verse in Brahma Samhita and asking Shri Maharaj, can you give some more details on this? Can you explain this further? And Shri Maharaj immediately, you know, puts up the boundary, you know, and he says, you know, we are not to enter into, you know, an analytical discussion of these fine and high topics. You know, we are, these are, these things are high above us you know? and then he gave went on to give a very beautiful talk on this theme and it's published as an article actually called fools rush in where angels fear to tread <laughs> so that that is a that is a point to to bear in mind you know we are we are we feel blessed to be hearing um but but particularly with these kind of very esoteric sensitive subject matters we are We are careful, we are cautious. You know? The intellect, I was reflecting on this earlier today, the intellect is, is actually a dirty thing. And the plane of devotion is pure, near mouth, spotless. And if we, if we approach that plane with this dirt of the, the intellect, then we are doing ourselves a disservice. You know, we will, you know, that analogy is given of the, of the bee, On, on the jar of honey, right? You know, and the, you know, that bee can see that honey, can describe that honey very well, may be able to describe all the chemical components of that honey, but they're not tasting that honey. So we, we don't want to be like that. You know, we have to keep our eyes on that goal that we want to actually taste and experience that premananda mahananda, you know, which is being mentioned here. We don't just want to be able to talk about it and describe it and analyze it and so on, but we want this higher truth to enter our hearts. Do you, do you want to no. say anything? No. No. Okay. Just... okay. Um, and then also just briefly going, um, one thing I did want to point out in the verse is this phrase, many of you are familiar with, Shula Sarasati Thakur would use them, Referring to Shishi Radha Krishna as the predominated and predominating moiety. Right? So we can conceive of the absolute truth, the supreme manifestation of divinity, as comprised of two parts. You know, that is, you know, divine masculine principle, Shri Krishna, divine feminine principle, Shri Radha. And they can also be conceived of in this sense as the as in, the, in these words here, predominated, right? And predominating, right? Because ultimately the feminine principle means sacrifice, service, dedication, submission, surrender, right? The giving, the yielding mood and the masculine predominating, right? That is representing assertion, dominance and so on. So this is one way in which Um, our gurus refer to the these two parts of the absolute truth. Okay, before we go on to the purport, does anyone want to to add anything or question anything? No. 
and welcome everyone else who's joined. Radhana Rupini, Aloka, Dina Bandhu, and, and, and others. Okay, so we can we can go on to the. I you know I actually would like to look ref. I would like to look at that article. I think I did actually publish it um, on jayashree.org. Let me see if it is there just very quickly, because it is a it is a wonderful article. I hope I did. Um, hope I did publish it. Yes, here it is. Fools rush in where angels fear to tread. Um, maybe I'll just um, screen share briefly. Now that I'm a co-host, I can do that. Okay, per i, per i devoti italiani, li ho condiviso su WhatsApp in la Brahma Samhita. Stiamo leggendo il verso 3. So this is a very wonderful article prepared from a talk of Shilashida Marsh. We have um, fools rush in where angels. So you see here this question is referencing this um, this verse, which you've just been through, verse three of Brahma Samhita. And he's asking Shilashida Marsh, you know, how can we draw this? <laughs> not, not, not the right question to ask. Uh, to ask Shula Shidhar Maharaj. You know. And Shula, look, look how like cautious, immediately Shula Shidhar Maharaj, he's putting up the wall. You know, I'm, I'm, he's not accommodating this at all. And usually Shula Shidhar Maharaj, he's very tolerant and very accommodating of the various, you know, how can we say, um, bothersome questions or unnecessary, let's say unnecessary questions that would come his way. Generally, he should shoot him out very patiently, but immediately he's very clearly saying, I'm sorry, but we are not to enter into the discussion of such higher and subtle position of the Leela, Radha and Krishna. We're on verse three, Ramasimha. We're, we're, oh, you know, okay, sorry. We're just discussing this one article where you, you heard everything. <laughs> um, this higher and subtle position like this, this isn't something that we're going to like you know chart out you know and you know with measurements and details and all of this you know we are keeping this above us that is not to be brought into public and that is the distinction between the Gaudiya Math and the Sahajya section imitationist section you know, in, in one place, Shilashidamar, she makes this very nice point that, you know, even, you know, even for a common man in this world, like to, to have access to their private life, like, that, that's, that's weird. <laughs> you know? like, like, people have their private lives. So if even an ordinary person in this world, like they have like a zone that you don't enter, then what to speak of the Supreme Lord? You know, wh why do we think it can all go under our, uh, the, our microscope, right? Or, or we, we want it to be like a reality TV show where we can see everything that's going on at every moment. No, no. surely there must be, you know, personality, right? The more that we advance in Krishna consciousness, the more we like vibe with this mood of personality, where, you know, of personal, entering into a personal conception. Of, of who is the Lord and our relationship with the Lord and all these things, you know. So Krishna has his private life, you know, and it is a privilege to, to be given some glimpse of that, you know. We don't want to draw out some, you know, analytical discussion of his inner, inner life with his intimate associates. So, um, we are, when the program of the sadhana stage is finished, it will come automatically, spontaneously. We are believers in that and not to know the form already, and then we will reach there. That is not the policy accepted by Guru Maharaj, Prabhupada. Puja Laragapata Gaurabhapada. Because there, there are those who, they make this argument that in order to be able to enter this particular area of Krishna's pastimes, you know, connected with Radha Krishna, we have to practice and we have to prepare and, 
and we have to meditate on all of it. You know? But what's that, what that's actually doing is dragging that higher and subtle plane down within the, the plane of our intellect, our mind, our senses, our imagination. You know? But you know, our, our gurus are telling us this, that what he's, Lushita Maharaj is saying here, when we're ready for that, it will be irresistible, it will be automatic, it will be natural. We don't need to learn it before. No, that is, a, that, that is something that will damage our creeper of devotion to you know, preemptively, prematurely approach such things. You know, but, but when we are ready, it will be automatic. You know, when a woman needs to give birth, she'll give birth. She doesn't need someone to tell her at that time. You know, but when it needs to happen, it will happen. It will be a natural, automatic process. So Social Shri Maharaj is discussing this here extensively. Do your duty in your plane according to what you deserve and that will come naturally. Don't go to be a disbeliever and be very eager to see the final result. Don't do like that for then you will get Maya instead of yoga Maya. He knows it fully well. She knows it fully well when you are to be taken into the confidential area. And that cannot be acquired by any other thing but his sweet will, the flow of her sweet will or his sweet will. And, you know, this is something which I again and again feel so much appreciation for with our gurus because, you know, and you can go, you know, like, why are we here? This is a question we want to ask ourselves sometimes. Like, why are we here in the mission of Shila, Go, Shila Bhakti Sundar Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj, Shila Bhakti Laksha Shidhar Dev Goswami Maharaj? Why are we? aspiring servitors of Sri Chaitanya Saraswama. You can go, there are so many, there are dozens and dozens, you know, one of our acquaintances just, you know, he, he just published a book, you know, on the Hare Krishnas in Britain, like a sociological study. And there's, I don't even know how many, dozens and dozens, that's just in the UK. So like, there are so many, there are so many different institutions you can go to within the fold of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. Even if you narrow it down to, even if you narrow it down to the, the lineage of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur specifically, there are so many you know, groups that you can go to. So why are we here? You know, we want to ask ourselves that question sometimes. And this is one of the points, you know, that. You know, we can hear so many things about the teachings. We can hear the teachings everywhere. We can hear the ideal everywhere. But what is the particular angle of vision, you know, through which we are looking at these things? You know, we're hearing about Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We're hearing about the Leela of Sri Sri Radha Krishna. We're hearing about practices of devotion, service life. But, but what are some of the, the subtle nuances of our mood and approach, you know, like, like the, the real, the, the deepest, profoundest feeling of the heart, you know, they're giving that to us. You know, like one thing I remember sometimes is our Guru Dave, you know, he mentioned when I go to Vrindavan and I'm going to the different places of Radha and Krishna's pastimes, I'm not directly thinking, oh, this is where this Leela happens, right? And this yeah. is where that Leela happened. But I'm thinking this is where my guru went, right? And my guru had appreciation for this. Gorky Shor does Babaji like to come here. Rupa Goswami loved this place. And Saraswati Thakur, this was his favorite place and so on. So he's appreciating, his mood was that he's appreciating the Leela of Radha Krishna through the lens of his guru's appreciation. You know, or, or, or even more, you could say, you know, appreciating more the mood of his gurus and their appreciation for that higher Leela. The emphasis more on his immediate relationship with his guru Varga. So, so there are so many nuances and feeling which are, are showing us the real mood of the real mood, showing us what is the mood of someone who's actually in that plane, who's actually approaching that plane. And this is what we will see comes up again and again, this feeling that Pujala Ragapata Gorva Bange. What does that mean, Robinson? You know that line? <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> From our like lower, uh, 
All right, we're following the path of Vidya Marg and the Raga Marg path. We're worshiping from above. Very good. Very good. You have a real Brahmachari here. <laughs> Um, yes, we're doing puja to the raga pots within Gaurava Bhanga, within the posture of respect, the posture of reverence. And this is something that comes up again and again and again. You know, our Gurudev had that verse inscribed at the front entrance of our of our mat, you know, Matala Hadijana Kirtana Bhange, Puja La Ragapat, Gaurava Bhange. Now we are staying in our lower plane and always keeping that mentality this is above us you know this is the property of our gurus it is not within our jurisdiction this is a, an important quote from mahabharat quoted often by our gurus achincha kluje bhava natam starkena yojayat that which is achincha that which is inconceivable don't try to drag it down within the plane of your intellect it is beyond the jurisdiction of your intellect. We have to keep that within our mind at all times. Don't try to drag that into the zone of reason. This is autocratic in its nature. Always prepare yourself, hanker, but don't make it an object of your experience. So, and now this, this person doesn't seem to be getting the point. <laughs> Shushin Maharaj has given this whole wonderful explanation. And the devotee saying, question, can they draw something general like a lotus flower? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> there are some people I know, if they were there, they would just slap that person. <laughs> you know, Shushin Maharaj is like trying to explain the principle and they're going back to these this point about they want to make a painting like you know, forget your painting you know try to understand what Shula Shudamaraj is saying here and um, this is a really wonderful article I can share it in our in our chat um, there's just something else I want to I know there was another line here I wanted to So many things. Srila Sridhar also tells this incident when Saraswati Thakur went to visit an old friend in Vrindavan and they were, they were reciting the 10th canto. You know? They were like jumping to the 10th canto, which is describing the Rasa Lila. There's a custom like that. And Srila Saraswati Thakur entered, he bowed down his head and he left the room. You know? mm -hmm. And his friend came running after him. Oh, what happened? You know, we're the best part. You know? Why are you going? And Sarasi Taku explains, you know, our, here it is, our guru's order is such, you know, if you attend Rasa Lila explanation, you will commit offense. I cannot stand there even for a second. This is my guru's order. And Shula Shudamai, she also gives this example about this Julan Yatra, this custom of swinging, you know, deities or Radha Krishna, which is actually practiced very widely. Um, but, you know, Sarasti Thakur did not allow that, but now many of the missions are doing it because it is a, it is a charming thing to do, right? It is, it is fun. You get to swing rather than Krishna, like, you know, but it is, it is, it is sentimental, you know, and it is, it is dangerous because we are taking that, again, making that higher thing an object of our experience. So Srila Sridhamaraj is speaking very frankly here. You know, that is too high for us. I must be true to my hearing of the words of my Gurudev. If I want my realization and not any position, to attract people by such, so, by such show and to make money or to make a favorable field for preaching, they may do like that, but I do not do. I do not want popularity nor any position of a higher acharya. I am a student, a faithful student. What I heard from my Gurudev, I try my best to stick there to keep my position there as I heard from him. Of course, for big propaganda, they may take different ways as they think. They are now free, but I am not a member to do so, to go on in such way, I try. 
In my nature, I am such. I want truth and I hope and crave for the mercy of the Vaishnavas and you all that I may not have that ambition, but to be the humblest, the most humble servant of the Lord and that I may not be misguided. I may engage myself in the lower form of service. Says Raguna Das Goswami. May I be this. My aspiration is to be the servant of the servant of the servant, servant, servant. My faith, this is a very beautiful quote. My faith may be so firm and may be of such quality that the least offer of his service, of divine service, may satisfy me. I may not be ambitious to run high, to get the chance there in the higher officer class. With my lowest connection with the divinity, I may go on, satisfied with my life. Okay, well, it's quite a long article. We can, we can stop there. I just wanted to share something of the, the gist of this. And this also I wanted to share. She's giving so many examples here in this, in this discussion. And he mentions also this occasion when Sarasati Thakur, he had a, a residence, a single story building constructed near Lalita Kunda. And then he mentioned a second story is necessary, but I will not be able to live there. So mm -hmm. Srila Maharaj, you know, it's kind of a puzzling thing to say, right? We're gonna build a second level, but I won't live there. <laughs> so Srila Maharaj said, then who will live there? Why do we need to build another level? You know, like now here, right in Villa Govinda, they're building extra <laughs> levels, but for people to live. You know? <laughs> Where are you reading from? This is um an article of Shilashita Marsh. I'll say I'll share the link in um in our chat here. In the Zoom chat. Where is the chat? Here it is. Okay, the link is here in our chat. So, so Shilashinama said, then, so who's going to live there? Why are, why are we building it if no one's going to live there? And Shilasarasi Thakur responded, no, you don't know. Better persons will live there. Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Gorky Shore Babaji, our gurus will live there, he's saying. They will live there and we shall stay on the ground floor and we shall serve them. Mm -hmm. Again, he said, I shall live in Govardhan. Radha Kund is the highest place, the place of our gurus. They will live here in closer connection with Leela, but we are not fit to live there. We shall live in Govardhan, just a little far away. The, this is the line I wanted to come. The whole tenor of his life was such. That is high, high. And from below, we are to honor that. We are to establish in the whole world this sort of posing the proper regard of that higher Leela that is too high. One day in Allahabad, perhaps it was that very year Shripad Swami Maharaj was initiated while speaking in a park, in a park, Srila Sarasati Thakur said, I am out to give a challenge to fight with any person to show that the highest position is occupied by my Gurudev. So, sorry, could you all please make sure you're muted? Um, sorry to be rude. Can you, um, can you do yourself? Yeah, but because it, I'm, it's, it's just hard to call. see because I'm screen sharing, so I have to scroll down. Yeah, yeah. it's a lot of devotees here. Um, I volunteer to for muting people. Sorry, what did you say? Oh, I just volunteered to. She's happy to mute people if someone makes her an admin. Okay. Her internet, she's on the bad internet part of the land. Right, right. I think it's okay for now. We can think for next time. No, it's not a big problem. So Sarsi Thakur made this announcement out to give a challenge to fight with any person to show that the highest position is occupied by my Gurudev. Let anyone come to fight with me to decide. I am ready 
I am ready to give that challenge to anyone and everyone. Let them come to fight with me. I am ready to establish the throne in the highest place, my Gurudev. Pujala Raghapata Gorva Bange. It's very, very important verse for us. Our Gurudev, on one occasion, he was speaking about this verse in Russia, and um, he, I'm trying to remember his exact phrase, he said, This is our principle. This is our this is our bhajan, our practicing life. This is our ideal. You know, this is everything. This that you know we are we are worshiping that higher plane, holding it above our head. Okay, well we can go back to the text of Brahma Samhita, unless anyone wants to. There was a question from already here. So there's a question. Okay, we have a question. Yes, in Italian. Oh, oh, from Scarlet. Okay. What did Scarlet say? You said there is two Maya, Maha Maya and different Maya. Oh, like yoga okay. Maya, Maya. Oh, okay, okay. Very nice question. Yeah, nice question, Scarlet. <laughs> so, yes, two types of Maya, two types of illusion. Maha Maya, who is, who is overseeing this mundane world. We can think of her as, from a positive angle of vision, we can think of her as quality control, you know, testing the souls, you know, checking that they're, they're fully pure in heart, that they're ready to enter, you know, the higher plane, the next chapter, the next phase, you know, deluding us, right? And it is a, she's an examiner. You could also think of her like that. You know, she's examining us and deluding us in the process and causing us to identify with this bodily plane, misconception of so many different varieties. But then there's also in the in Krishna's abode, there is another type of Maya, and that is Yoga Maya. And so what, why, what, why would there be illusion in that higher plane? That is because it is the plane of jnana, what is known as jnana shunya bhakti, means knowledge free devotion. And that, that phrase, not jnana shunya bhakti, it has different connotations, but the highest connotation is that Krishna's closest, most intimate associates, they don't have the awareness that he is God. You know, because that, that would spoil things. You know? So in, in that sense, they're, they're ignorant. You know? Shila Maharaj used this expression referring to the Braja Gopis as you know, half, half, half civilized jungle girls. You know? Krishna enjoys associating with, with such persons. But their not knowing is higher than our knowing. You know? So yoga maya, she has this, this um, you know, she has this deluding effect. So, so that their their resonance there, they're not they're not so aware. Sometimes you see that they have some in, indication. They're they're touching upon that. But sometimes, but it's very very brief, very slight touch upon that awareness. Otherwise, for the most part, they're they're living. They're thinking of Krishna as their beloved, as their beloved, right? Their beloved son, their beloved friends, their lover, and so on, right? Because anything else would would spoil the relationship. If they had that awareness that he is God, then immediately awe and reverence comes into it, and and the intimacy is is ruined. And you know they don't they don't want to think of that. You know we hear sometimes even. You no, know, Mother just showed us. She's she's expressing. Oh, I've heard some rumors. You know, some some malicious persons are saying. You know, Krishna isn't really my son, and you know, really he comes from some great family, and some people are going to come and take him away. You know, she doesn't like that idea. She just wants him to be her own boy. You know, and and we hear that occasion when when Krishna has been accused of eating dirt, right? And and so. Mother Jashoda comes and takes baby Krishna on her lap. Oh, Marco would be happy we're telling some Krishna stories. <laughs> One of the friends here. Um, so she's opening, open your mouth, you know, my boy. And she's looking inside his mouth to see if he's really been eating dirt. 
And then what does she see? She sees, you know, the whole cosmos in there, you know, so many planetary systems inside there. And then, and then for some very, very, um, oh, Roger's asking, is that from the 10th canto? <laughs> Uh, it's a, I don't know exactly what the Shastric source is, but this was an expression of Shiva Shidha Maharaj. <laughs> um, so, so then for a moment, she's, she's bewildered. Oh, what is this? And then she's thinking, oh, I have heard these rumors about Krishna, and she's starting to feel some doubt. Right? And then meanwhile, a little, a little kitten nearby meows. You know, and, and baby Krishna, you know, he clutches on hold of his mother, you know, like, like, like fearfully, like, oh, please protect me, protect me, mother, like that. And then she forgets everything. Oh, no. And she feels reassured. Oh, he's my own boy. You know, he's my own. And I have to take care of him. You know? Oh, I, I'll, I'll check it in a minute. Yeah. Um, you know, like, the, 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 like this is actually a level of devotion that, you know, it needs this type of interaction, like, because they, they, their heart is, is of such depth, they have a need to express their heart and love for Krishna to such a great depth that to know that he is God would restrict that flow. You know, in one place, Shiva he says he says that Mother Jashoda, she thrives on Krishna's naughtiness, and she said she actually Shiva Shiva actually says that if Krishna wasn't naughty, then she might die. You know, like like she needs that. She need, you know you see sometimes mothers like they get a kick out of how naughty their children are. And, oh, I have to, I have to teach my child. I have to show them what's what, or, you know, or they, they have this kind of like secret delight, you know, in, in how naughty their children are, right? And they, and they, they have this feeling, oh, they need me. Because this is the mood in Vatsalya Rasa, the parental mood, the guardian mood. Their love is so intense that they feel Krishna needs them, right? There's, there's, um, there's tadiya, there's tadiya tattva, right? There's the conception of belonging. This is, this is the, for the surrendered souls, this mood comes into their heart. This tadiya means, means his, right? That, you know, I am his. And this is, and we, we hear this often, this expression, you know, tadiya, we are, we are, we, we're aspiring for that. But even higher than that is another feeling, madhya, that he's mine. <laughs> not, not, not that I am his, but he's mine. You know, he belongs to me and I'm taking care of him and I need to show him what's what. You know, that's an even higher mood of devotion, you know, which obviously we will not imitate. You know, but those in Vatsalya Rasa, they have that type of mood. And it's a very particular, curious, peculiar mood. Right? So, so yoga maya is supporting the flow the free flow of love, you know? And she also acts as a, as a kind of stage manager. You know, she's orchestrating things in, in such a way that, will, that she knows will be most pleasing to Krishna. She knows what Krishna wants before he knows it and she's making the arrangements. So, so this, is, this is why illusion has a place within the higher Leela. Another way you could think of it is that you know, the highest type of truth is imbued with beauty, mercy, love, right? Satyam, Shivam, Sundaram. The highest type of Satyam truth is enriched by Sundaram, beauty. So Krishna Leela, Leela, the whole concept of Leela is like that. It doesn't make sense. It's unnecessary. It's not useful. <laughs> It's, it's serving a higher purpose, you know, something more, you know, for, for, for the sake of it. You know. So it is, it is a different plane of truth. And just living in the plane of raw truth, that, that becomes very dry. You know, and, and ultimately, there, you know, there's, it's empty. You know, like if you, you know, like think about in relationships. 
You know, if we're always operating on a plane of dry truth, we'd probably lose all of our friends, right? <laughs> we would just be like that annoying guy that nobody wants to hang out with. You know? <laughs> so like, you know, there's such things as sensitivity, right? And feeling, and, you know, appreciating the subjective side over the objective side. Okay, well, let's go to the chat here and, and welcome all of those who've joined. Banavi's joined us from Rome and Anu Krishna from Arizona and also Jita Krishna. Okay, so we're looking at the chat here. Could someone there be? I'm sorry, I don't know what you mean here, Scarlett. You're saying um, ovens, ovens to Krishna? Next, she. Do, do one yeah. be thrown out because they did? I'm sorry, I don't understand. Offense. Could someone, oh, could someone there be offensive to Krishna? No, there, this is a plane beyond offense. There's no question of offense. Even if somebody's slapping Krishna, you know, which they do, <laughs> you know, or if they're they're eating an, an app half of an apple and giving a half of an apple. Okay, some noises going on here. Where is it coming from? Oh, we've got two pages here. Um, sorry. Wow, we've got so many people Sudev. joining. Okay. 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 Thank you, Sudev. Um so um so many people <laughs> your link. <laughs> yes, uh, slap if they slap Krishna, it's all based on love. That whole, you cannot enter that plane unless you are, you are totally steeped in the spirit of self-sacrifice. You've already, you've already passed a lot of preliminary examinations. So it's, it's just you, you know, it's just like, you know, like just think of like in your relationships in the world. It's like if somebody off the street comes in and slaps you, you'll consider that to be offensive, right? But if one of your best friends comes and slaps you, that could be an affectionate thing that makes you very happy, you know, or pulls your hair or steals your food. Or it's like, it's annoying, but it's also fun, right? At the same time, delightfully annoying, right? So it's like that, like anyone who's entered that plane you know, they've, they've already proved themselves, you know, everything is based on the highest degree of, of sacrifice, you know, they may behave casually with Krishna, joke with Krishna, you know, push elbow Krishna and all kinds of things, but they're all ready to die a billion times over at any second for the slightest whim, to satisfy the slightest whim of Krishna, like that's the world we're talking about, you know. So there's no question of offense there. You know, here, you know, here in this world, because we're the problem here is that we are pervaded by the spirit of selfishness, right? So that's why we're given some guidelines to follow. You know, we we, you know, like I'll I'll give you, I'll give you one example. You know, like could you know in the cooking for the deity. Right, like one one level of instruction is, like you you won't taste anything before it's offered, right? And if you do, that's an offense, right? And the conception behind that is that we are we are by nature selfish persons who are just thinking about our own enjoyment. And the danger is that when we're cooking, instead of thinking about Krishna, we're just going to be thinking about our own tongue, right? So then that. That level of instruction is given. Don't taste anything before it's been offered. That's one level. But then the, the more mature, higher level of instruction is like, well, we're only thinking about Krishna's interest. Then maybe it's better if we do taste it before it's offered to make sure it's okay. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's an expression of devotion. No, it's an expression of sacrifice, assuming that we've already reached a particular level of dedication. Right, so it is. It is. It is the same type of principle. So everyone who's entered that plane, they're they're you know they're they are 
fully standing on the platform of full dedication, fully for Krishna's interest, and there's no question of anything else. Krishna enjoys being chastised by his beloved. You know, there's one verse in the scripture saying that, that when, when the personified Vedas are making so many prayers to Krishna, you know, Krishna is distracted hearing his, his beloved rebuke him. You know, that's capturing his mind more than these reverential prayers of the Vedas. That's more pleasing to him. So that is that is the plane of of Vrindavan. Does this mean that one is in a hopeless situation that one never gets free from this? I don't understand. But don't don't worry about offenses, Scarlett. You know, we're we're like children. You know, we're babies passing stool in the lap of our mother. The mother doesn't mind, you know? so don't worry too much. It's okay. It's all okay. The only offense that we really have to be careful about is is offenses to the Vaishnavas. You know, having a critical mentality or envious mentality towards the Vaishnavas. That is the the serious offense that we have to avoid. And on the, on the other side of that is that we want to appreciate and glorify the Vaishnavas. That will help us to, to actually grow and progress. So if we, we're focusing on that, then we're okay. You know, and this is why our Guru Dev, Srila Govinda Maharaj, emphasized again and again and again, you know, Chinara Pisu Nichena, Tarori Vasahishtuna, Amani Namanadena, Kirtaniya Sadahari. To to you know to to be humbler than a blade of grass, tolerant like a tree, to give honor to others without expecting it for ourselves. You know, if we can if we can live in this type of way, then we will never we will never you know cause any offense to the Vaishnavas. And Scarlet saying, "Please forgive me. I thought." We weren't allowed to taste before offering to Krishna. <laughs> well, as I said, you know, that's one level of instruction. And in some places they follow that. You know, it, you know, it's there's the all of these things, they're time, place, and circumstance. Like what's what's a rule at one time is not a rule at another time. What's a rule for one person is not a rule for another person. No, but but what I'm saying is that there are there are there's there's a gradation. Right and understanding and application of these things and and so that's one level of understanding. Don't taste anything before it's offered. But a higher consideration is I should taste it because I want to make sure it tastes good for Krishna and the Vaishnavas. Right? No, Radhana Rupini. Yes. What was her name? Maybe Jayadev can remember the lady who um Gurudev Sabadi. Was it Sabadi? Yeah, she tasted, she's it's mentioned in um, around the Ramayan, the Ramayan. Oh, Suvasni, did you, maybe you remember. Is it Sabadi? Sabari, Sabari. Sabari, I can, can't pronounce it properly. Sabari. Yeah, she's this old woman, right? And, and Ram Chandra comes across her in her travels, in his travels. And, and she so eagerly wants to offer these berries to him. And she tastes them first, right? Before she gives them. To him, our Guru Dave liked to, to give that, that example. Yes, right. same as Vidura, Vidura's wife also peels the, the skin of the bananas, gives the skin to Krishna, you know, <laughs> throws out the fruit and offers the skin. <laughs> right. Is it yes. Vidura's wife, right? Is yes, it? yes, Vidura's wife. But, but you know, you know, another thing is that someone may feel in their heart, oh, that's for the higher devotees. Right, it, you, know, it, you know, there's room for different moods, right? There's, I mean, like when I'm cooking, I, I like to taste it to check if is it too much salt, is it not enough salt? Like I, I don't want the devotees to be suffering from my cooking, you know, and maybe also my ego. I want them to think I'm a good cook. You know? <laughs> Let's be real here. But if somebody feels in their heart. You know, oh, I, I don't feel qualified to do that. You know, I, 
I, I'm afraid that my tongue will get involved, then I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just do the best I can and offer it like that. Then that's also a beautiful mood to have. You know, we, we have to get past this fear of right and wrong at a certain point. You know, we want to try to enter into a more mature practice of Krishna consciousness where it's our own property, you know, where we're feeling this and we're evaluating this from our, from our own heart. We're, we're going beyond, you know, ritualistic religion of do this and do that, do this or you're going to hell and so on and so forth. You're going to suffer and et cetera. Let's forget, throw all of that into the garbage. Right, Krishna wants our hearts, Krishna wants our love. So we want to try to come from a place of affection, you know, and sincere hearty feeling. So, you know, what, what do I feel is most appropriate for me? You know, what feels genuine and authentic to me? This is where this is where we want to try to get to. And that's the mood that our Guru Dave. Encouraged. I know sometimes he would say to devotees asking him questions, you know, you're a mature devotee in Krishna consciousness, you have some experience, you know, you consider, you now what do you think is the appropriate thing? Make this your own thing. Don't just use, you know, religion as a crutch to lean on, but make this your own thing. Bring this into the core of your heart. You know, not some external thing on the periphery of your existence or some structure that you're following, but bring this into your heart. That's, that's what our gurus ultimately want from us. Is that making sense, Scarlett? Gosh, we, we almost, Rama, our time is almost up. Yeah, we haven't read the verse. Haven't read the verse. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's at least read the translation. <laughs> we did, we read the translation. We did, yeah. We didn't read the purport. Okay, we'll have to save it for next time. Does anyone have any final comments or questions? Krishna Kanzi, you want to say uh, anything in Italian? Done about this. I was curious, can one say that Yoga Maya and Mahamaya have the same job basically is to make the living entity forget Krishna is God? She does the same in both places? Um, what do you say, Krishna? As a um, opposite kind of forgetfulness. Opposite kind of forgetfulness. I I like that. Yeah, th Marie, thank you. That feels like an oversimplification. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. That's that's how I feel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, one thing is to to forget that Krishna exists and is the center of everything and is the source of everything. One another thing is to not to recognize his divinity to have a a relationship more intimate with him. I mean, it's just. Mahamaya is the shadow of Yoga Maya. So, I mean, yes, it's forgetfulness, but quite different kind. Mahamaya <laughs> is taking people away from Krishna, and Yoga Maya is taking people towards Krishna. So it is, yes, right. okay. as Krishna kind of said, it's an opposite type of forgetfulness. And another thing is that. You know, from what I understand, Yoga Maya is also operating on Krishna too. You know, Krishna becomes bewildered sometimes. You know, he also forgets himself sometimes. And you know, she she has um she she has different functions. You know, also you know when the thank you, Dina Trump. You know, also like when the when the eternal associates of the Lord descend to this world, you know, yoga maya is also playing within them. Like they're forgetting, like for the purpose of their service, their mission in this world, they're forgetting their, their position, right? There, there's also that. You know, so she plays many different roles. Radhana Rupini, did you want to say something? Uh, yes. Um, I, I wanted to say that 
just like, you know, thinking about offenses, you know, I was at one point in my life very obsessed about sense gratification and minimizing my sense gratification. And I was thinking that was going to help me to advance in spiritual life. And I had, um, I was talking to an advanced devotee and saying, oh, I take a cold shower every morning and I do this and that. And this devotee said to me, yes, but once the the towel hits your body, that's sense gratification. So I was really obsessing with it. And then I met this a very nice sadhu, the um, a Vaishnava a woman devotee, way older than me. And, um, and I presented her my problem of, you know, I'm, I'm really thinking about sense gratification and how I can minimize it, my sense gratification. And she's listening to me rambling on for a while. And she looked at me and she asked me one question. Do you want to be like Hiranya Kashipu or do you want bhakti? <laughs> I said, bhakti. <laughs> So she said, don't mind any of this. Just, just, you know, don't be obsessed by, like what you were saying, you know, don't get too much into the offenses and stuff. Or, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, be, you be aware of it. And like, I have to be aware of, you know, you know, controlling my senses, but not to be so obsessed that mm -hmm. I forget bhakti. Yes. Yes. Thank you for sharing that, Radhana Gupini. Because, you know, Krishna, Krishna doesn't, he's not interested in our renunciation or in our exploitation. It's actually on the two sides of the same coin. You know, like Hiranya Kashipu, he's going through all these austerities for what, right? So he can gain some subtle power, which he'll use for an exploitative purpose, right? So, you know, both of these things, they're neither the, you know, bukti and mukti, you know, both of these tendencies are to be rejected. And actually that tendency for renunciation can ultimately be more dangerous, right? right? Because there's that ego that comes behind it, right? That I'm so renounced and I'm so, I'm, I'm free from the senses and all these things, you know, but Krishna wants our heart. He's interested in devotion. That's what we are, we are trying yes, to cultivate. We just, I just now remember, we just read the story of, uh, I think it was Sudama, the Brahmana. Mm. Yeah. In the Bhagavatam, we are for the first time after 25 years, I say, we are reading the Bhagavatam from beginning to end. <laughs> and there are many interesting stories that we heard, but we never read. And there is this of Sudama, who is this Brahmana, very renounced. And uh, I mean, to make it short to the point, the, the wife also became a must, very like skinny and uh, suffering, and they didn't have. Uh, any money to buy anything they were really and he was very into like uh, practicing he was in in school with Krishna in the Guru Kula he was one of mm. Krishna's uh, Guru Kula's uh, right. mate and anyway then uh, the wife at some point to, to to see his husband so renounced she thought you, your friend is Krishna, why don't you go there and ask if he can give you something? Like he is the king uh, and your friend, you, you went to school together, maybe he can help. And then uh, he, he, he go to Krishna on the wife request and, he, and the wife, they said you should bring something, but they didn't have anything to offer. So he, he gets some flat rice, like, he be they beg from the neighbor, from friends, some fl flat rice to bring to Krishna. And then anyway, he goes to Krishna in his big palace. Uh, and I think it was Rohini, we see? Yeah, Rukmini. Rukmini. Uh, Rukmini. 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 Ah, Rukmini. 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 Yes. Yeah. Rukmini received him in, his, in the palace. And then Krishna treated him like so nicely. He em embraced him. Everyone is like, he's dressing like a mendicant like a rag on it and they saw Krishna like being so affectionate to him anyway at the end he didn't have the courage to ask for anything from Krishna and also he was shy to offer his his, uh, his rice like when he saw all this opulence what what Krishna's gonna do with my little offering but then Krishna was like come on 
I know you have something for me, give it to me, give it to me. <laughs> and then he gave this flat rice to Krishna and he ate the rice and said, this is the most wonderful rice. He gave everyone to all the, to the queen and all the servants there, some of this rice, you please taste, this rice is wonderful. And at the end, he, he left, he, he goes, Sudama goes without having, without daring to ask anything to Krishna. But Krishna, of course, he knows everything. And as he go back, he the, the wife come dressed like a princess and the servitor, like followed by servitor and parade. And he entered this palace and he realized that there's no more his house, but it's a palace. And, and the, the wife was like young and beautiful and he couldn't recognize her, but he was still dressing like a Brahmana, like before. So she recognized him when he came. And in the, in the comment on one of the verse of this story, it says that because Sudama had still some attachment to renunciation and to remove this attachment to renunciation from Sudama, <laughs> Krishna feel like cover him with uh, money, with wealth, with all kinds of opulence so he could uh, give I up this attachment to renunciation. <laughs> So it's, it's, it's a wonderful story, and and uh, Vishaka said, like we shouldn't <laughs> be. There are like two witches, renunciation and exploitation. Mm. They're two sides of the same coin. Mm. Mm. So our line is always in in between. Is like whatever nice or pleasant we we see around us, we think it's for Krishna. It's coming from Him, mm. and we offer it to Him. Mm. We don't reject this world. Mm. like the yogi or like jnani like mm. but we see everything connecting connected mm -hmm. to krishna and we and we offer to him mentally or mm. like like that but that story of shri daman is how, how krishna removed his attachment to renunciation <laughs> and we was didn't expect you. you didn't expect that yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes, and how also is described how everyone is doing that, not for his own, like when his wife asked him to please go, he was to please her husband. She she felt like she didn't have the means to please her husband. And then he she asked, please go to Krishna, to your friend. Mm. Like that, not with the intention of getting herself something. And he goes to Krishna, not for himself, but for the wife's sake. So, you know, all this mood of devotion, like renunciation in devotion. Mm. So mm. It's, that is what is our mm. practice. Wonderful, wonderful. You reminded me how we saw Gurudev, you know, he would give different instructions to different devotees, right? Depending on, you know, where they were. And, and one, one example, which I, I came to my mind um, in regards to Akadashi, Right. No, like when people ask Gurudev about, can you take chocolate on a Kadashi? Gurudev, you know, because some people say it's a fruit, yeah. you know, it's not really a bean, so it's okay. You know, and Gurudev said, you know, like whether it's a fruit or a bean, you know, that's not, that's beyond, that's besides the point. But chocolate goes against the spirit of a Kadashi because it's so pleasurable, right? So that was his instruction. But then, then there was there was one case of one. Maybe I won't say the name here, but one Indian sannyasi who came from a Brahmin family, and you know, and you know, quite strict, you know, about following all the Vedic customs, and has some attachment to fasting, austerity, renunciation. And, but there was one occasion on Akadashi when our Guru Dev forced him to eat chocolate. <laughs> 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 like trying to break that, you know, that, that Brahmanism in him. That attachment to in the attachment to, rules, rules. to rules. Exactly. You exactly. say also yeah. about one sannyasi, famous sannyasi, like for all, all my life I'm trying to break his attachment to the Vidima. Uh-huh. 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 Because I know. very strict. Right, right. Very strict in his practice. Mm. And it's like for I always been trying to to break his strictness, mm. you know, to mm. let the flow, of, you know, at some point, but not for us. We <laughs> we have the opposite no. problem. <laughs> we, we are struggling to become more strict. I mean, I speak for myself, so not to take it as a. 
Yeah, we, we have we have the opposite problem. We have the opposite problem. <laughs> one is one is like a Western problem, another yeah. is an Indian problem. Indian yeah. problem sometimes <laughs> they become too attached to to following the rules and regulation. Yeah. No, everybody <laughs> right. All right. Well, it's been a beautiful meeting with all of you. And uh Anyone want to share any final words before we close for today? And special thanks to all of our Italian friends. Yeah, sorry, Italian friends. <laughs> Enjoy, I did, joined today. I did share the, the Brahma Samita in Italian, but we didn't have it. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Yes, renunciation and devotion. Yes. 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 Yes, this is our, this is the real principle of bhakti. Okay, then we'll, we'll close for today. Suvasmi Didi, our, our hostess, you want any, add any closing words? No, it was beautiful, beautiful um, class and beautiful reflections. Very nice, actually. Thank you. Jai Shilabhati Sundar Govinda Dev Goswami Marjki. Jai Shilabhati. Her day of Gosami Majki Jai Shi Ramas Ki Jai Devotees and Seer Seekers Ki Jai in the Ashram Ki Jai Vishnu Tuti Devotee Jai 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 So if you if you tune in next week, we might advance another paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Jai. 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 thank you very much for your association. Thank you, Dandavad.